want to talk to you about something that's going to be very important to me to, uh, this morning. I want to talk to you about the great fulfillment. The great fulfillment. <clears throat> you know, probably the biggest question that people have, and I'm going to tell you what it is in just a second. But let me ask y'all, let me ask y'all this. It, uh, does everybody in here, do you have a checking account? Yeah. Most people? Okay. What if I told you that you could write a check for any amount you want and it would cash? Huh? Does that excite anybody? Okay. Well, my, my subject is not money this morning, but, but, but I do want to get your attention because this is very important. How many of y'all that, that, that would excite you if you could write a check today for the amount that you want and it would cash? Okay. All right. Get that amount in your head right now, the amount that you would write it for. Don't pass out. Just take your time. Everybody got their amount? Okay. Let me tell you how, let me tell you how, how you can cash that. Watch this. By answering one simple question. Y'all ready? Why are you here? Take your time. Not, not, not why are you here in the sanctuary or why are you here online? Why are you here in the earth? Why did God create you? We spend all of our lives chasing up to work, back and forth to work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start this. I'm going to start this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Do you know that there'll never be fulfillment until you find out your calling and your assignment? You know what the world, the world, <clears throat> the world portrays that a good life is a life of fame, money, popularity, how many likes you can get on your Instagram or your Facebook page of people that don't even know you? How, how, you know, how many followers can I get on social media of people who still don't know you? And you know what the crazy thing is, is we're always trying to uh, uh, attract the attention of people who don't know us instead of getting the attention of the one that does. If you go through your life, the number one question that most people want to know is, God, why did you create me? Meaning this, why, what is my assignment? What am I called to do? And I'm saying it like this today. Why are you here? Have you ever taken time to really think about the fact that I've had, I've had friends, I've had high, high people I went to high school with, and a lot of them are, a lot of them are gone. I'm talking about they're, they're, if you want to call it deceased, they're dead, they're deceased. But all of 2021, all, most of 2020, there was a pandemic in the country, still considered to be a pandemic. And think about this, you're still here. Why? Why has God kept you here? Why has he kept you alive? There has to be a purpose. There has to be a reason. <clears throat> and we're going to take the next, however long the Lord gives me, and I'm going to drill this thing home, and I'm going to drill it home. I know like I know my name. Y'all just got, y'all better hit the share button. You don't want to miss this. Do you know how many kids go to college and to get a degree in a field that they never, they never go in? Have any of y'all ever done that? Did y'all get some skill set in a background that you're not even in? Or a skill, a degree in something that you, watch this. We'll, 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 sometimes it's, it's because you, when you're in college, you may not know. Watch this. It is, y'all ready for what I'm going to say? It's illegal for God to create you and not tell you why. Otherwise, he couldn't hold you accountable for creating you. It is illegal for God to have created you. No, 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 stop it, stop it. No, I hear y'all. No, your mother and your daddy had you. God is the author of creation. Your mama and your daddy can't create nothing. They had you. 
They did the act to have you. God is the one who allowed you to be, to you to be created. You were created. He says, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. No, no, you got to understand. You with your quirky self, God took great thought in making you. And you got to understand that I have to be here for a reason. <clears throat> and all of these people that I've gone before me that are no longer here, and I'm still here, you're still here. Why? Have you never taken time? You, we just wake back up. January 1, January 2. Why is this? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Back to work. Watch this. No. Is it, is it back to work? Or is it, I need to find my assignment in my race? Is this going to be another year where you're, where you're on the grind and you're not in your race? Listen, no, this is, this, this is, I don't want this to be another year. I want this to be a fulfilled year. The only way you're going to be fulfilled is that you find out why you're here. Why? Uh, I, 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 all right, go with Psalms 139. Psalms 139, verse 1. And let's take our time and talk about this. <clears throat> and all my young people, y'all need to share this with your nieces, your nephews, anybody under 30, under 40. Y'all need to, no, and, and I'm going to teach them. No, if you're older than that, don't trip today because this is for everybody. And I, and I got some things I'm going to say that's going to change your mind about everything today. But what I'm saying is this. So many young people come to me all the time, and I ask people. You know, when I was growing up, this is what we used to say. This is what we used to say to people. We used to say, uh, y'all, and we probably, most of y'all still do this, and I told y'all, the Lord, the Lord revealed to me, that is so in error. Any of y'all ever say to young people, what do you want to be when you grow up? Doesn't it make more sense to ask, what did God call you to be? Amen. Instead of us asking kids, what do they want to be, we should be asking God, what did you create them to be? See, we, see we, we teach people to try to think up what will make them happy. We teach people, what do you, you want to be? Oh, I, I got I to gotta find out for myself? So you know, what, you know what most people do most of their lives? Explore trying to find out what they want to be. Instead of just going to someone who's already, watch this, we'll talk about that in a second. Go to verse 1. It says, oh Lord, you have searched me and you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand, you understand all my thoughts all for far. Ain't that good to know somebody understand all these crazy thoughts we be having? The average person has 70,000 thoughts a day that run through their mind. Watch this. You barely understand your thoughts, and he does. Have any of y'all, sometimes your, your brain just on overload? Have, have, you ever, have you ever shut your whole, have you ever, your brain been so old, on, on overload that it's all, it's all, I call it paralysis, where it paralyzes you to where you get nothing done because you have too much to think about to do? Is that, y'all know what I'm talking about? Watch this. Sometimes we're so busy thinking instead of listening so that we can find out what we're supposed to be doing. Watch this. Go in verse 3. Can y'all do the verse three for me? It says, you comprehend my path and my lying down, and you are acquainted with how many of my ways? I, I'm going to just notify y'all. Some of y'all got some funny acting ways. How many of y'all can be honest on January the 2nd and tell the truth? You know you act funny every now and then. Can y'all tell the truth? And, and the rest of y'all lying on January the 2nd already. Watch it. Every last one of us, we got some funny acting ways. And watch this. He says, I'm, watch this, I'm acquainted, meaning this. I'm familiar with you, even when you acting funny. I'm familiar with everything about you. Who is this talking to us? This is our Father, the one who created us. He's letting us know, watch this, there's nothing about you that I don't know about. There's no part about you that I'm unfamiliar with. Amen. Are y'all getting this? So watch this, verse 4. For there is not a word on my tongue, O, o Lord, uh, uh, on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you already know what I'm going to say. Before I even say it, you're acquainted with my ways, you know my behaviors, you know my habits, you know my words, you have, you have hedged, verse 5, you have a hedged 
Be, uh, you have hedged me before and you have laid your hand upon me before and behind, behind and before, meaning this. I taught on Friday. Watch this. He's protected everything behind you and he's protecting everything in front of you. Catch this now because he has an assignment for you. So, see, you don't understand. Out of all the people that have, have died, there has to be a reason you're still here. He's been protecting you to keep you here, but why, God? If I'm here, it has to be for a reason. Watch this. So, he's been, watch this. When the enemy tries to come behind me, he says, no, I've had a hedge on them. That's why they're still alive. Can we be honest for a second? All of us have done some stuff to remove the hedge. Aren't you glad that he kept the hedge? I know I didn't jump the fence a couple of times. Watch this. He's been keeping us for a reason. Verse 6. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I can't obtain it. He says, you don't even understand you at times, but I do. Seven. He says, where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take my wings of the morning and dwell in the othermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. So every year, watch this, we start setting goals and we start, watch this, we start making plans. But what if our plans should actually be his plans? What if this year, how many people, no, what, what I'm going to start doing, I teach goal setting every year. Goal setting, you have to do it if you're going to be successful. But you know what I'm going to start teaching? I'm going to start teaching downloading at the end of the year so you can plan to do what God said at the first of the year. All of y'all in here got, watch this, you got ideas and some of you got plans, but the Bible says many are the plans of man, but only the plans of God will prevail in your life. So watch this. If you don't have his plan, your plan is a bad plan. So watch this. Are you really going to do, watch this, anything great in 2022? And I can answer that for you. The answer is, if you don't have his plans, no. You have to get to the place where success is not defined as money, is not defined as houses, is not defined as cars, but success is defined as being in the will of God for your life. God has an assignment and a plan for you, specifically for you. And I'm going to show you that in the scriptures today. God has a plan for you. There's no way around it. You can't get around it. God has a plan for me. You need to know that. And it's illegal for him to have a plan and not share the plan. And the only reason you might not know the plan is because you never asked, why am I here? My God, my God. What is the plan for your life? Watch this. If you don't download this plan, you'll spend your whole life searching. You'll spend your whole life wandering, looking, trying to figure it out. What am I supposed to be doing? Where should I have been? I should have did this. I should have did this. I should have. I don't forget. I was talking to a, 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 somebody I love, a preacher. And he says, and, and he's, a, a, he's a holy man of God, anointed man of God. And he said to me, I, he says, I think I miss God. I said, what do you mean? He says, I should have moved 20 years ago. I heard the Lord speak to me. And he says, I should have moved to this place and he says I never did it and I could and I and I said Bishop I said you know why didn't you do it he says I he says I don't know he says and until this day he's he's older now he's in his 70s now and watch this and now he's still he's considering moving to the place that the Lord told him to move to 20 years ago. What I'm telling you is this, don't wait or delay the race or the assignment that God has given you when you can start it today. You can find out today from God, what am I supposed to be doing? And go with this Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, 11. Most of y'all have heard this. Some of y'all, everybody didn't grow up in church. It says, for I know the plans that I think towards you. 
saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you what? An expected end. Then you will call upon me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear you, and I will heed you. Folks, listen to me. I, I know the thoughts or the plans. So you mean to tell me that God is thinking about you? Can I be honest with y'all? There ain't nobody thinking about y'all like God. Any of y'all got some people y'all love? You ain't thinking about them 24-7. You love your kids, but you ain't just going around all day, all day, every day thinking about them. Watch this. God is the only person that loves you enough to think about you all the time. Watch this. But do you love him enough to think about him and what he wants for you? Folks, listen to me. The fact that God has plans for you, that means this. The architect has already drawn out a blueprint, and all you got to do is follow the plan. You know what I told God? When God called me to preach, I had, there was no pattern. Meaning, meaning I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you all some stuff in just a second. But when, 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 when see, the, the love of God is incomp it's incomprehensible. When I sat in those pews and I found out that God loved a messed up person like me, I don't think y'all understand the release and the, 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 the removal and the weight of all of that stuff I was carrying to see him, to, to see him love me enough to take it up off of me. I said, what kind of God is this that loves me like this to take this kind of burden and sin up off of me? Now, when, you got to understand, some of you, you're using, you're using everything against you instead of using everything for you. I'll explain it in a second. And so when I got called, I went to preachers, and I told preachers, I said, I think the Lord is calling me. You know what they told me? Don't do it. I was like, what? Instead of you encouraging me in what I feel like the Lord is calling me to do, they told me, I said, no, I, no, don't do it. When I went to preachers to, to ask for help and hide a pastor, I had zero help. Watch this. When God speaks, watch this. That's the only voice that matters moving forward. You know why some of y'all can't get on the right track and you can't, you can't figure out your assignment? Because you got everything and everybody in your ear. You got Instagram in your ear. You got Facebook in your ear. You, you got people you don't even know in your ear. You got, y'all got, y'all got everybody in your ear except God. And you're wondering why you're missing valuable time. I told my 23-year-old, I said, son, I said, son, you don't, you don't get it. Like, I wish that I could have my younger years back to obey God more. Like, I wish, see, what you don't understand is, you're 23 today, tomorrow you're going to be 33. You're going to wake up one morning, you're going to be 43. You're going to wake up another morning, you're going to be 53, 63, 73. And then you're going to wake up one morning and it's over. And the question is this, what legacy will you leave and what mark will you leave so people know you were here? Are you doing the only way, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to you in just a second. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and then let me show you this, and then, I, and then I'm going to share some things with you that's going to be a blessing to you. You know, one of the things, I hate when people think that, I hate when people think that what I do is, is more popular than what you should be doing. People are always looking for a, a, a platform or a stage not knowing that if you were in your assignment, that is the platform or stage that God has given you. Everybody has a platform or a stage. See, you think that this means success because you get a stage and people are listening. That's the dumbest thing ever. It is. But that's what the world has deemed as success. How many people watch you? How many people follow you? And watch this. God deems success is a, as an assignment fulfilled. Your life, when you lead this life, is, it's not about how, how many stages did you mount. It's about how many lives did you change with the assignment that God has given you. God is not going to, folks, listen. God is not going to hold you accountable for something he didn't call you to do. 
some of y'all are out here, y'all are doing stuff. You ain't, God ain't told you to do that. That's like people, people give me, people ask me for years, Pastor, are we going, uh, are we going to start a food pantry? I said, for what? I am, I am not, I am not keeping mouse out of, mice out of a food pantry. Watch this. That's not my assignment. You know what we did? We gave money to feed the homeless. I know what my assignment is. My assignment is teaching and training. People get mad when I stay in my lane because I know my lane. Watch this. You got to know your lane and your assignment in this life. You got to know what you're supposed to be doing so you can tell other people, no, I can't help with that. No, I can't do that. That is not my assignment. That is not my call. You're not going to make me feel bad about what God told you to do. See, you got to understand, sometimes God is telling other folk to do it, and they want you to do what he didn't told them to do. No, you got to know what you're supposed to be doing. All right, watch this. Let me show you this. Come on. Go to 1 Corinthians 12, 12, and this is important. It says, for just as the body is a unity and yet has many parts. The body has what? Many parts. And all the parts, though many, form only one body. So there are many parts, but it makes up what? One body. So it is with Christ the Messiah, the anointed one. Next verse. For by means of the personal agency of the Holy Spirit, we were, uh, it says, we were all, whether Jews or Greek, we were slaves or free, baptized, united together into one body, and made to drink of one Holy Spirit. For the body does not consist of one limb or organ, but of what? Many. Many. 15. Catch this. You got to catch this now. The foot should say, it says, if the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, would it, would it be therefore not a part of the body? Watch this, meaning this. If the foot would think that because I'm not the hand that I'm not valuable, it doesn't change the fact that the foot is still needed. Watch this. One of the biggest mistakes that I see Christians make is, is being too the selfishness of thinking that you're not needed. It's selfish to think that God doesn't need you. Amen. He created you for a reason. He had you for a reason. It, watch this. It's selfish of you to not fulfill the assignment that God has created you for. See, well, you know what we want to do? We want to take this life and, and we want to we wanna, we wanna do what we want to do. Watch this. And God gives you the free will to do what you want to do, but love should always bring you back to obedience. You can't say, I love God, but I don't obey God. The two don't go hand in hand. Love will always make you obey. When I fell in love with God, immediately I got to the point where I said, Lord, I don't want to disappoint you. Have, many, have, have any of y'all ever loved somebody enough that you didn't want to disappoint them? Two of y'all, three of y'all, that's good. That's good. The rest of y'all might want to get off yourself a little bit so you can learn to love somebody enough to, to care enough. When I fell in love with God, you know what I said? I said, Lord, I don't want to disappoint you. I said, Lord, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I don't. I, I want to be in your will. I want to be in your word. I don't want to be off with you. Watch this. He loved me so much that he created me for a reason. And if the foot should say that I'm not a part. So watch this. What would make you think that you were insignificant? Or what would make you think that the clothes you wear or the house you live in will make you more significant? Watch this. Significance or insignificance, watch this, is not found in things. Significance is found in God. And when you find God and you let God find you and when God shows you who you are and why he created you, now I have fulfillment and now I walk out the thing that he showed me. You know how you're going to be happy? Listen, you've had money. All of y'all in here, you might, be, you, you might have some money now, you might not have no money. But the money doesn't fulfill you. You know how many people got money and get divorced every day of the week? The money doesn't bring fulfillment. The house doesn't bring fulfillment. What good is a house and we fighting every day? What good is a house and the only, uh, the, the only time I can enjoy it is when I go to bed? Wow. No, that stuff, see, we're so confused about fulfillment. We don't understand that fulfillment is only found in assignment. 
Fulfillment is only found in calling. Fulfillment is only found in purpose. You know why I get up every single Sunday? No, I don't get up because I want to get up every Sunday. You know what I like? I, 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 I would love to have brunch one Sunday. I miss, I miss brunch every Sunday for the last 12 years. I've never been able to have brunch on a Sunday. Watch this. But I'm okay with it. You know why? Because I'm on assignment. I'm being fulfilled by seeing lives change, the number of people I can reach, the number of people I can touch. Watch this. What is on the inside of you that needs to come out? See, you know what most people do. I'm going to tell you what we do. We, we, we either, we, we, we hold things in dormant. We stay dormant. And, and we, watch this. We, we lock in the thing that God wants to let out. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Listen, I ain't, have no, I ain't have no seminary background. How am I going to preach? Do you know the things that ran through my mind when I got called to do the thing? Watch this. That I wasn't qualified to do? God, watch this. He never calls the qualified. He qualifies the called. None of us are qualified to do what he's calling us to do. So why do you keep giving the excuses of why you can't do it? Don't you think he knew you wasn't qualified when he called you to do it? Watch this. No, see, you're letting your insecurities. You know, what, you know what we do as people? We do what we're comfortable with. That's why we never do anything great. Great is not behind comfortable. Great is behind faith. And if, you, if you're going to make your life count, you're going to have to get some faith to do what God has called you to do. Yeah. Folks, listen to me. You, you can live this life and, and never make a mark. And I want that to change this year. I don't want you to, no, you're not normal. Stop that. You're not normal. Stop trying to dumb down your life to, to minimize the greatness that God has put on the inside of you. No, this church is full of great people people that are called by God that understand and know their assignment. That is my prayer for 2022. My prayer is not that you just wake up lost. Wake up going back to another job that you don't like or you hate or you don't know what you're supposed to be doing with your life. No, my prayer is in 2022, you'll start putting your hands to the plow. You'll start finding out, God, why am I here? And you're going to start making a difference in the lives of those that you've been assigned to. I asked, I Eric, I asked, I'll never forget him. I asked my pastor's pastor. This has this been years ago, 20 years ago. I asked my pastor's pastor, and, uh, and I couldn't figure it out. And, and, and go over to the next verse, 16. Go, go in 16. I asked my pastor's pastor. I'll never forget it. Because my pastor was dry. I'm not my personality was dry. He could be mean at times, seemed like it. And I couldn't figure it out. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm called to preach. Am I supposed to be like that? No, I couldn't figure it out. So, I, you know, because I'm trying, I don't have no road map. I just know I'm called a pastor. But I don't know, I don't have no road map. So I'm looking around trying to figure out, okay, what does a pastor behave like? Or what does he act like? I don't have nothing, you know, I don't know what I'm supposed to be attaching to. And so uh, I remember I had the opportunity to sit down with him one-on-one, -on -one, my pastor's pastor. Me and him are sitting down and I asked him, I said, I said, I'm a, you know, I, let me ask you a question. I said, I don't really know how to act. You know, or, or, or how to, you know, how I'm supposed to carry myself. I said, because, I said, I said, Bishop is, is kind of, you know, he can be kind of straightforward and dry, not really, don't come across as a people person that time. And I said, um, and I said, you so, you so jolly. All he did was joke and laugh with people. His pastor, all he did was joke and laugh. That's all he did. And I said, all you do is joke and laugh. I said, I'm confused. I said, I don't know which one is the right one. He said, you know what he told me? This is what he said. We're sitting down over, 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 over lunch. He said, the right one is you. I said, huh? He said, you don't, you're not supposed to be like him. And you're not supposed to be like me. You're supposed to be like Christ and be the person that Christ has called you to be. This is what he told me. He says, God has uniquely made you. And he says, there are people that are assigned to you as long as you keep your authenticity and you don't try to be me or you don't try to be him. 
He says, if you try to be me or you try to be him, he says, there's going to come a time when the covers are going to come up off of you and they're going to realize you were neither one of us. He says, and if you're not authentic, you won't draw the right people into your life that God has called you to be a part of your life. And some of y'all got the wrong people in your life because you're not authentic because you're trying to be somebody that you're not instead of being who God called you to uniquely be, not knowing that God has a people assigned to you just the way you are. You don't have to try to be somebody else to find, watch this, to find your tribe. Be who you are and your tribe will find you. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm, what, what I'm trying to tell you? So, so you got to know who you are in Christ and be who you are in Christ. And you got to be okay with people who ain't assigned to you. I'm okay with some of y'all that don't like me. You just ain't assigned to me. But guess what? I'm happy and I'm living it up with the people that like me, the people that love me, the people that are assigned to me. I'm good with y'all. You, you see what I'm saying? Some of y'all get so worked up trying to get people that like you that ain't assigned to you. You got to get delivered from people. You, you, you know why I'm free? Because I'm delivered from you. I'm delivered from all of y'all. I don't care. Some of y'all, some Sundays y'all be like, Pastor, good sermon. So what, on the Sundays you don't tell me it's a bad one? I can't worry about what people think about me. Watch this. The only voice that matters is the one that made me. You got to get to the point where the only thing that matters is I'm walking in what daddy said about my life. You're going to have people on this road to this assignment. Because this year, you're going you to walk in this thing. I'm going to push you out in the street, and you're going to have to run. I'm going to push you out in the highway, and, you, and, and I ain't going to let you come back to the sidewalk. Every time you try to come back, I'm going to push you back. No, because some of you, watch this, you've been hiding too long. You've been hiding, God, God has been hiding, you've been hiding too long. It's, it's time that you walk in the thing that God has called you to do. Come on, come on, let's hurry up because I want to show you some things. Watch this. The ear should say, because I am not the eye. It says, if the ear should say, because I am not the eye, do I not belong in the body? Watch this. Let me ask you this. Well, let me tell you this. God wouldn't have created you if you didn't have value. I'm going to say it again. God wouldn't have created you if you didn't have value. You've got to stop downplaying your value to the body. See, if you are a Christian, you have value to the entire kingdom of God. God created you for a specific reason, a specific purpose, and you have value. Watch this. Just because we have the same office doesn't mean we have the same function. So I'm called a pastor. There are thousands of other people called a pastor. We are all called to the office of pastor, but all of us have different functions within our office. So my assignment is different from another pastor's assignment and another pastor's assignment, another pastor's assignment. So that's why, we, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, you, just because you see somebody else called to do what you're called to do, watch this, you can't compare yourself to them because your function might be different. And the way they bless people might not be the way you're called to bless people in the same office just because I call the singing she's called the sing don't mean watch this don't mean we're gonna draw the same crowd my voice is uniquely designed to have a set of people to bless just like their voice is uniquely designed to have a set of people to bless but what I'm not gonna do is compare myself to somebody else when God has created you uniquely tell your neighbor say I'm gonna stop comparing myself to others God has an assignment for me. Watch this. You got to get out of comparison. You got to get out of comparison. You'll never fulfill your assignment comparing yourself to people. When I started preaching, when I started preaching, I, I would preach in the jails and I would go to the prisons and preach. And so <clears throat> I didn't know uh, what, you know, I didn't know how to preach. I didn't have no formal training. Nobody told me how to preach. Nobody showed me how to preach. And, 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 and so I, had, I was trying to figure everything out. All I knew was, Lord, you're calling me to, to do something for you. So, Lord, I'll start where I can. And the guy, that guy at church, he said, you, you want to go to prison ministry? I said, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And so I started watching Christian television. And so I see all these different preachers. 
And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, what style is, what's the style I'm supposed to have? Like, I don't, you know, I don't know. So, so first lady told me, she kept telling me about Frederick Casey Price Sr. So I tried watching him on TV, and people was just sitting still. <laughs> and they're listening. And she said, he's supposed, he's one of the greatest teachers in the body of Christ. I said, he's boring. <laughs> said, he ain't doing nothing but talking, and people just listening. And then I turned over to Bishop Jakes. People was yelling and shouting and spitting. <laughs> and yelling and just... I said, that's it right there. I said, that's it right there. I said, I don't know who this, this price guy you're telling me about. I said, but he ain't it. Them people were just sitting still up in there. I said, that's it right there. I go into prisons. I'm screaming, shouting, yelling. Ah, and something that the Lord said in the Bible say, ah. I get home at night, vomiting everywhere. I said, after me, the devil don't want me to preach this gospel. I said, what's going on? The devil don't want me to preach this gospel. And, and I go back to the prison again, screaming, yelling, shouting. I get back home, vomiting again. I said, Lord, why is the devil after me? I said, Lord, the, the, the Lord said, son, you, you, you're screaming to the top. You, you're coughing up your lungs every time you go. He said, son, you're screaming and you're yelling and you're shouting. I said, I said but Lord, that's what I saw him do. He said, yeah, but you're not good at that. And that's not what I called you to do. I said, oh, my God. Watch this. Some of y'all are looking at other people trying to mimic something that you're not assigned to. Wondering why you're not bearing fruit. So you know what I had to do? I had to spend time with God to find out how he wired me, not how he wired you. I had to spend time with God to find out, God, what's my flow? What's my design? So you know what I did when I first started pastor? I mimicked everything Frederick K.C. Price Sr. did. I met, I'm talking about I, his, I would put my notes inside my Bible. He had his note. I take my notes inside my Bible. I would open to the front page of my Bible. Then I would go flip to the scriptures. Watch this. Because I hadn't spent enough time with God to find out how he wanted me to minister. What I'm telling some of you is, watch this. You're not lost. You just haven't found the one who has created you. Watch this. When you spend time with God to find out why I'm here, he'll download to you all of the plans on how to operate in this life to show you why you're here. And when you start doing that, watch this. You're important to the body. There's people. Lives that are supposed to be changed, watch this, by the assignment that God has given you. Okay, now let me hit you with this. So, so watch this. <clears throat> so, the, the, one of the worst things that could happen is that I notice this all the time, and I got, I, got, I got 17 minutes. Watch this. I notice this all the time. We give God excuses as to why we can't do what he called us to do. I told God when he called me, I said, God, I'm not going to pass the people. I said, I'm not going to be responsible for them people. I said, I'm going to be a black Billy Graham. That's what I told God. No, I, I heard God telling me you're supposed to preach to people. I said, I'm not doing that. That's what I told. I, how bold do you have to be to tell God you're not going to do something? I grew up, I grew up in an African-American household where telling your parents no. Any of y'all grew up in a house like that? Oh, y'all grew up like me. Okay. I said, how bold do you have to be to tell God no? But watch this. Some of y'all are telling them no. You're not doing what you know you're supposed to be doing. You know what we do? We do a portion of what we think we're supposed to be doing so we can try to get accolades for not doing all of what he told us to do. So you know what we do? We hide. So you know what I started doing? I started hiding in church. I started hiding like I'm a good person. I tithe. I'm in church every Sunday. I told the Lord, I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be responsible for no people. I said, I'm going to be a black Billy Graham. Watch this. He started, he started gradually, slowly cutting on me. And he started taking away everything that was keeping me from him and my assignment. He started gradually stripping me of everything that I was using as excuses as to why I couldn't be what he called me and created me to be. 
Watch this. You don't have a good enough excuse for not walking in your assignment. Let me, let me show you. Go over to Judges chapter 6. <coughs> Judges chapter 6. Let me, give you, let me give you a couple of quick things. Judges chapter 6, 13. It says, And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, then why is this happening to us? And where be all these miracles which our father told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this might, watch this, and you shall save Israel. Go in this might. So hold on, hold on. His, his whole family is captured. And the Lord tells him, I'm going to send you to deliver the entire tribe. Watch this. That's the same thing the Lord is telling you. Folks, listen to me. This is, this is not the only pulpit. You have a pulpit in your everyday life when you're walking in your assignment. I'm so sick of people trying to get up here not knowing that the true pulpit is out there. You don't get it. When you're walking in your assignment, God automatically gives you a platform. A pulpit is simply a platform. Some of you, are, you're looking for a platform, but you're not in your call. When you're in your call, he automatically gives you a platform. He sent Gideon. Watch what Gideon said. He says, have, watch this. God says, have I not sent you? That's the question for you for 20, 2022. Has the Lord not sent you to do something? Has the Lord not assigned something in your life for you to do something great? Go to verse 15. Gideon said to him, don't this sound like us? Oh, Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Here he go. Here he go. Don't you think the Lord knew who you was when he asked you to do it? Don't you think he knew your shortcomings when he asked you to do it? Behold, watch this. He starts giving the Lord excuses. Behold, my clan is the poorest amongst my family, the poorest in the Manasseh. He says, and I'm the least. He said, watch this. No, you got to catch this. I'm the least even in my own house. How you going to call me to deliver a whole people when I can't even get no respect in my own house? Watch this. He's pouring on the excuses as to why he's not qualified to walk in his assignment. Go to verse 16. The Lord said to him, surely I will be with you and you shall, you shall smite the Midianites as one man. Watch this. What's your excuse? Your excuse can't, watch this. It can't be fear. Gideon was afraid. He took that, he took that excuse away. Do y'all know I, 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 I was, I, I pastored with, with great anxiety. I ain't know how to pastor. Nobody would help me pastor. Nobody trained me to pastor. You know, you know what I did? I, I did it with great obedience, not knowing what was on the other side. You know what you want? You want to see it before you do it, not knowing the only way to see it is to do it. You're telling God, when this happened, I'm going to do that. And he's telling you, when you move, you'll, you'll see it happen. Watch this. How many excuses are you going to give God before you do the thing that he's asked you to do? Watch this. Do, do you not think, you know what he was saying? Watch this. My family is the least tribe out of all of these tribes. How could you call me? Oh, I don't know about y'all, but every last one of us in here, we got some mess in our family bloodline. Watch this. You don't think the Lord knew that when he called you? You don't, think, you don't think the Lord knew when he called me with my past? You know what I kept telling the Lord? Are you sure you're calling me? Lord, you know all the stuff I've done? Watch this. He's like, exactly. That's why I want to use you because you'll give me glory. I know, I know what you've done and I know what, watch this. I, I know you know that you couldn't have been delivered from any of it if it wasn't for me. I need somebody that's been delivered from something that I can use. You keep trying to use your past against you, and he's trying to use your past for you. 
You don't understand, Pastor. I, I, you don't understand. Paul was a murderer. Watch this. And he used them to write half of the New Testament, two-thirds of the New Testament. Watch this. How many excuses are you going to give God as to why you can't do what he's called you to do? Don't you think that, don't you think he knew you was broke when he asked you to start it? I can't start the business. Uh, I, I feel like the Lord telling me to start the business, but I ain't got no money. Who said you needed money? Who told you that? No, no, folks. I told, I told the people we was coming to Chesterfield. Listen, we was in a school. And I told people, we was in a school. No building. We, got, we, got, we have no building. We're in a school. And, I, and, and <coughs> I put up a billboard. How do you, what dummy puts up a billboard in a school? No. I says, I put up a billboard that said, coming soon to Chesterfield. I had a billboard up saying, we're coming to Chesterfield, and we don't even have a building in Henrico. Either you crazy or either you believe in God for something tremendous that you can't do by yourself. God is not looking for people that can do it in their might. He's looking for people that can do it in his might. You keep trying to tell God what you ain't got. And he's saying, if you got me, that's all you need. Why do you keep looking at what you ain't got instead of looking at who you got? Are y'all getting this? Watch this. No. No, Abraham, over in Genesis, when he calls Abraham, how old was Abraham when he, Abram at the time, how old was Abram when he called him? 75 years old. So how are you going to use your age as an excuse for not walking in your assignment? See, some of y'all, well, I'm too old to do anything for God. Devil is a liar. I'm too young to do something for God. Devil is a liar. Joseph was 17. Abraham, Abram, Abraham was 75. Watch this. How long are you going to use your past against you when God is trying to use your past for you? How long are you going to use your age? Rahab, I talked this morning on, 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 on Rahab. Rahab, Rahab was, was a prostitute. Watch this. Pastor, you don't know, you don't know what I used to do. You don't know what, what, who, you know, I, I used to, I used to sleep around. I used to sell drugs. Who ain't? Who, who ain't done something? You show me one of y'all in here that ain't never sinned and ain't never done nothing, and I'll show you somebody that ain't qualified to be used. But if you show me somebody that done been through some hell and back and then done a few things and that they had a few problems, you might be qualified to be used by God. That woman was at that well over there in John chapter 4. Watch this. That woman said, watch this. That, that woman came to the well. She said, you ain't even supposed to be talking to somebody like me. Watch this. She, she, she felt like she was unqualified. She felt down on herself. She felt like she was, watch this, she wasn't worthy of the call of the assignment. And G Jesus said, watch this. She, she says, he, G Jesus prophesied to her and tells her, he said, no, you ain't had, you ain't had four husbands. You had five Watch this. But your divorce doesn't disqualify you from being used by me. He told, he told that woman, he says, all you need is just a little. Watch this. He says, you've been drinking from the wrong well. See, when you drink from the well of shame, you, you stay out of, out of your call and assignment. See, if the devil keeps you drinking from the well of shame, you can never get in the well of prosperity. See, see, some of y'all, no, but, but I used to do this or I did this. And have, you, have you ever sinned and, and you cry after you sin and then you go right back and do the same thing all over again? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all, but anyway. But why, 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 no. The devil will keep you drinking from the, from, 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 from the well of shame. And Jesus said, watch this. He says, if you trust me with your life and you give me your life, I'll have you drinking from eternal living water for the rest of your life. <laughs> Folks, listen to me. We get ready to go. Watch this. No, we'll talk more about it. Watch this. Your, watch this. All of your fulfillment in life is tied up in you finding out why you're here. It's, it's, 
It's not that I'm, so, I, I'm sorry to burst y'all bubble. I know I taught on four hands, and you're supposed to have four hands. And I stand on that four hands message. I taught on it for a year. But all of your joy is not in a house or a car. It's not in a man or a woman. It's in Jesus Christ and finding out why he loved me so much to create me. If you find out that why, nothing else matters. Do you know how many people came against me when I, when I, when I stepped into my assignment and my call? I'm talking, about, I'm, not, I'm talking about I had people come, come up against me, like, like wouldn't speak to me, stop talking to me. And, 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 and watch this. And I, st I stayed the course. When, when, when God speaks, consult with man no longer. Watch this. We get, let me give you this, and then we're going to go and we'll talk more about it. Are y'all getting something out of this? Is this making sense? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. What are you supposed to be doing? Some of y'all are waiting on the next instructions, but you haven't done the first instructions. Are you going to be like Jonah and run? I promise you the Lord will find you. I promise you he'll catch up with you. I promise you he'll track you down. Stop looking over here thinking, oh, they doing real estate, I'm going to do real estate. They, 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 they over here, they doing this, I'm going to do that. Folks, listen to me. I'm not trying to be funny. God made you an original. You look like your mama, but you ain't your mama. You might, you might look like your daddy, but you ain't your daddy. You're God's child. He made you an original. He has a unique design for you. Watch this. I will not let you forfeit what God has placed on the inside of you this year. I will not let you turn in your hand and keep living a lame, normal life. You're not normal. You're not. Stop trying to be normal. Stop trying to fit in. Watch this. Let me give you the top two things I want you to leave with this week. And then we're done. The first thing is you have to make a daily choice to let God decide how he wants to use you. I must make a choice every single day to say, God, I'll let you use me however you see fit. That's the first step to finding out why you're here. God, whatever you want to do with my life, whatever you see fit, I'll yield to that, God. God, whatever you want, not what I want, God, not my will, but thy will be done in me. God, I'm going to stop fighting you. I'm, I'm going to stop trying to do what I want to do. And God, I'm going to find out what you want me to do. Even if it's hard, do it. Even if you don't have the money, do it. Even if you don't know how it's going to turn out, do it. Even if you got to do it crying, do it. Even if you got to do it without the support of your family, do it. Even if you got to do it without the support of your friends, do it. Even if you got to do it with nobody understanding, do it anyway. Even if you got to do it being thrown in a pit, do it. Even if you got to do it at 75, do it. Even if you got to do it at 16, do it. Whatever it is that God is calling you to do, you just got to step out and you got to do it. The second thing that must happen, the only difference between you and any of those people in the Bible that we talked about and that we read about every single day, y'all ready for this? Is that they made themselves available to God and they allowed themselves to do something extraordinary by their faith. 2022 is the year of faith and honor. The only reason we read about these in Hebrews and read about these patriarchs, you know what they're in? They're in the hallmark of faith. They're not in the hallmark of perfection. We don't read about these people because they were perfect. We read about them because of their faith. God doesn't use perfect people. He used faithful people. He used people of faith. This is the year that God wants to do something extraordinary in you and through you. But you're going to have to yield and say, God, not my will, but thy will. And I close with this. You're here for a reason. Why? One of my friends, he died in a car accident. He had all three of his kids in the car. They lived. And he died. God, why did you keep those kids alive? 
there's still something left for them to do. There's a reason that you're here. You wake up every morning like it's just by accident. No, it's by design. He put a hedge in the back of you. He put a hedge in the front of you on yesterday. He put a hedge behind you on January 1st. And he put a hedge in front of you on January 2nd so you could see January 2nd. Why? Because he has a greater call and assignment for your life. We will not be an average people living a normal life, doing normal things here in this ministry. We will be an abnormal people doing abnormal things, living an extraordinary life because of an extraordinary God that we serve, that gave us an extraordinary call and an extraordinary purpose and an extraordinary assignment for your lives. Lift your hands. Say, Father God, I'm your best creation. I'm created in your image. You love me. That's why you created me. I am not an accident. I'm created by design. Download your plans that you have for me into my spirit, God, that I might know the why, the why you created me. Whatever part of the body that you designed me to be, I yield myself now to be that part, to be that light that I might have influence. I thank you, God. My life is not wasted. I will give you glory in 2022. Double my favor. Double my future. Double my faith. Tonight, God, as I go to sleep, you'll download your precious assignment for my life that my life will not be by circumstance but it'll be by design come on and put a praise on it I'm here for a reason I'm here for a reason if you understood that you were here for a reason you would give up drugs today you'd lay aside whatever drug you're on you lay it aside today if you understood that you were created for a reason. You lay aside that sin that's so easily besetting you, Hebrews said, keeping you off track. You lay aside all of that stuff just to find out the why. You want to have an extraordinary life? Live it by faith. Live out the why. Why I'm here. The why is found behind your faith. When I walk it out by faith, all of a sudden, I experience another side of God. If you're listening today and you don't know whether or not you would go to heaven or hell if you were to die, you say, Pastor, I'm not sure. Sin separates you from God. Don't let anybody lie to you about that. I can't live in sin and think I'm just going to bust through the gates of heaven. No, sin separates me from God. I'm not going to go over what sin is. Sin means to miss the mark. You know whether or not you're living right, whether you're living for the Lord. If you're not, you might want to start with something called repentance. That means turning away from you. You don't get it right and come to God. You come to God and say, God, help me get it right. He'll take you just like you are, dirty and all. If that's you today, and you say, God, I want God to clean me up. I want him to wash me in the word. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I'm sorry for sinning against you. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for me in my sins. I repent, Lord, of any wrongdoing against you. I believe that he died on the third day and rose that I might be born again and have a new life in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. If you pray that prayer, the Bible says all of heaven is throwing a party. It's rejoicing for you. No, this is the biggest day of your life if you pray that prayer. Everything changes when you pray that prayer. If you're watching virtually and you pray that prayer, hit the share button. Your nieces, your nephews, your family members need to hear this message. Hit the share button. You're here for a reason. Hit the share button. You're here for a reason. Text somebody and say, go and listen to this. You're here for a reason. 
you pray that pr prayer, I need you to right now to grab your cell phones and text the word SAVED, that's A B E D, to 888 298 7740 and complete the link that they'll send back to you. If you don't have a cell phone, call the prayer line 1 800 250 9736. 1 800 250 9736. And one of our prayer counselors will pick up the phone and they'll pray with you and talk to you. If you are in the sanctuary and you pray that prayer and you say, I gave my life to the Lord. This is your day. We want to celebrate you. Can you wave at me? This is your day. You need to be bold and proud about it. If you pray that prayer, can you throw your hand up and be proud of throwing your hand up? This is a big day. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. No, that's major, man. No, that's major. Don't be ashamed about that. That's major. That's major, man. That's major. I got some books and material for the three of you that I'm going to give you. They're going to give you, a, in just a second, they're going to ask you uh, to, to go to the back, and they're going to give you some material. You need that material. Don't you dare be shy about giving your life to the Lord. That's the greatest miracle there ever is. We celebrate you on today. We celebrate you on today. That's major. Now, when you pray, man, everything changes. Heaven opens up for you. If you need to join a church today, but most of all, if you need a pastor, I don't, I don't understand how people don't have pastors. I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. I'll never understand it. When you go through life, when children are born, that's one of the greatest things that happen to anybody is when they have the birth of a child. A pastor dedicates their child. When people get married, a pastor marries you. When people get houses, a pastor blesses the home. And when people die, you should have a pastor sending you off the right way. Those are the, the most major events in an individual's life. All of them are marked and consecrated by a pastor. Why wouldn't you have one? You got a barber, you got a mechanic, you got a doctor. Some of y'all got lawyers, you got beauticians. You got all of this stuff. You got personal trainers, but you don't have pastors. You don't have to, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that I need somebody equipping me and watching over my soul. All you got to do is read the Bible. I have issues with people that don't have pastors. Nobody ever told me that I needed a pastor growing up. I thought it was all about just going to church, going to church, going to church. No, I needed a pastor. Nobody ever explained that to me. For what? Why do I need, what do I need a pastor for? Go read your Bible. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but not before I leave you with some people to help you. If you didn't need help, Jesus wouldn't have left us. Read your Bible. When God was leaving, he said, "Not I love y'all too much to leave you without help. I'm going to leave you somebody after my own heart to feed you with knowledge and understanding to love you. Jesus and God did the same thing. Left, both with, left us with pastors. Every time they would leave their people, they wouldn't leave them without a shepherd. It's the will of God that you have a pastor. I don't care what your barber said, what the barbershop talk said. I don't care what the people in the barbershop said. You need a pastor. Me and my, I love my barber. My barber is my friend. But everybody needs a pastor. If that's you today, start your year off with getting a pastor. Start your year off with getting a pastor. You got a goal. One of your goals should be to have a pastor in 2022. That should be one of your goals. If that's you and you're joining today, can you lift your hand and wave at me? I need to join this church today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Is there any, on, any other of you in here? I need a pastor. I'm joining today. If you're watching virtually and you're joining, if you're watching virtually and you're joining, you need to text the word member, M-E-M-B-E-R, to 888-298-7740. I'll go to my grave screaming, get a pastor. How do you die and have nobody to send you off because you were never connected to anything? How, how do you live and die and have nobody to send you off the right way? We got to stop doing stuff backwards, folks. Don't make our grandparents roll over in their graves about the foolishness of how we're living our lives. Get you a pastor. And when you find somebody that, do, that doesn't have a pastor, you, you check them in love and say, you need a pastor. Don't tell them they need a church. No, you need a pastor. Because people tell you, oh, I got a church. Yeah, but you won't go. I don't want to hear that. No, you need a pastor. You need to be accountable to somebody somewhere. I'm accountable. I have a pastor. We need account spiritual accountability. That's what it is. Having a pastor says I'm spiritually accountable. Somebody that's holding me spiritually accountable for my life and walk in Jesus Christ. That's what having a pastor says. I'm spiritually accountable. I can't wait 
to see you walk in your assignment and your call in 2022. It's going to be phenomenal. As always, I want to thank you for being a part of this broadcast, for being a part of Fred White Ministries. Thousands upon thousands of you watch this broadcast weekly, and it means the world to me that you are connecting or connected in some way. I'll go into the grocery store, I'll go to the gas station, I'll get emails from you guys, and you guys will say, we watch every single week. You have no idea how that inspires me and encourages me to keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. What I want you to do now is I want you to search your hearts, and I really want you to consider getting connected at a higher level. Listen, the scripture is very, very clear that every time the word of God is sown, that you're supposed to connect or reciprocate by your giving. That's Galatians chapter six. The Bible says that when the word of God is given, you wanna contribute or sow back into that word so that you can reap a harvest. It goes on to say that God is not mocked. If you give nothing, you'll get nothing back. Listen, the most blessed people I've ever met in my life, the richest people, I got rich friends and they're all givers. I want you today to consider partnering with Fred White Ministries for as little as $33 a month. We have some people that own businesses that give $100 a month. We have some people that give more than that, but I want you to consider today for $33 a month. Why 33, Pastor? Because 33, it's a covenant seed. It's a covenant connecting seed. Amos 3.3 says when two or more are, are together or gather together in agreement, anything becomes possible. It's a possibility seed of what God can do into your life. And it's an, a seed of covenant. It's a seed of agreement. And so I want you to consider today keeping this broadcast on the air and it's kept on the air by people like you who watch every single week. You have no idea, one, what giving $33 can do for keeping this broadcast on the air, but for two, what it can do for you by simply partnering with a man of God. Listen, I love this city, I love this broadcast, and I even love all of you out there that watch every single week. But let me give you this, and I want you to pray. If this is you and you say, you know what? I'll support you. I watch you every single week. I'll support what you're doing. You have no idea how many kids, we lives we change in the school systems because of your giving. We're partnered with seven different schools and every year we, we bless teachers, we bless children, children who can never play sports. We pay for them to, to get on the team, to get their uh, gear and things like that. All of these things are made possible by blessed people like you. Let me tell you this and then I'm done. I want you to pray about partnering today. How do I partner today? The Bible says over in Philippians, my God shall supply all of your needs. That's what Paul told the church in Philippi. But you got to catch this. There was a qualifier. Paul wasn't talking to everybody. He wasn't talking to every Christian. Paul was talking to those in, in Philippi that had partnered with his ministry. They were partners in his ministry. 19 cannot be given to you until you first qualify. And verse 15 is the qualifier. It says, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church gave to me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. You're the people that partner with me. And because you partner with me, your needs will be met by my God. Wow, is that not powerful? So listen. You can partner today simply by texting the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 888-737-3310, 888-737-3310. And you can simply check that box that says recurring and you can put in $33 a month, $100 a month, whatever it is the Lord is laying on your heart. Some of you, you say, Pastor, I can't give 33, but I can give $20 a month. Hey, partner today, give the $20 a month and watch what God will do in your life. Many of you, you need to join the ministry because you're local. You need to join. You watch this broadcast every single week. But if you just need to partner today, some of you may say, well, I have another church that I belong to, but I love watching you. Partner today. Be a blessing so we can continue being a blessing to those in this city. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so very much for keeping this broadcast on the air for years and many more years to go. I love you. Thank you for being connected to Fred White Ministries. You can catch us at PastorFred.com and you can catch us online every single week on Facebook, YouTube, and SpeakingSpirit.org. And you can partner today at PastorFred.com or you can simply do it by texting that word GIVE. God bless you. I love you. And thank you for being a part of Fred White Ministries.